Hey you, I'm Sarah Turner. I am a freelance copywriter and a copywriting mentor. And today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I research for writing sales copy, because that is a very important process. And when you kind of nail down your own process for researching for copy, it'll kind of write itself because you'll start to, you know, get into patterns and grooves and rhythms, and you'll start to see things that work, especially over time as you have more practice writing copy and you get actual numbers to support your work. So, um, but if you're just getting started or if you want some fresh ideas, here's kind of what my research process looks like for writing sales copy. So the first thing I do, let's go ahead and assume I'm working with a product uh, because I actually write for a lot of e-commerce brands, especially around you know health and wellness. And I think it'll help to write about keto products or talk about keto products to kind of have a theme as we go through. So the first thing I'll do is I will read reviews about the product that I'm writing about, as well as similar products, products that I you know think are successful or know are successful. I will read the reviews on them. And I love to focus on the five star reviews and the one star reviews because those are really telling. They'll tell you a lot. And you can take notes on things that people seem to be concerned about or things that people are really like turned off by when it comes to this particular product. So make sure that you're always taking notes of objections, of problems that are being solved, of solutions that are, you know, coming about from using this product and remember like if your product is new and there's never been copy written about it before it's totally fine you can d always find something that is similar and the next thing that I do is I join relevant Facebook groups so that I can hear from people who are you know using the products that's great a lot of brands actually now have Facebook groups so you can actually read conversations around people using the actual products and that is that is copy gold if that exists. In fact, I've encouraged clients to, to have these Facebook groups and build these communities around their products. So if that exists, great. If not, usually there's something relevant to the problem it's solving maybe. For example, people starting on the keto diet, people wanting to lose weight with keto. Those are all relevant Facebook groups where I can hear from people who are potential users or customers of my product. And I join those groups and I watch the conversations, you know, I'll even go in, you know, search keywords or terms that they're using that are specific to the product. Because that's the other thing is pretty much all customers and in a world around a particular product, right? They'll have their own lingo. They'll have their own phrases, their own, you know, acronyms even. So it's super important as a copywriter to get really familiar with those. And you'll notice that this is a lot of research already. I've only named two parts of my process, which is why I really recommend having a niche because it will become less work if you're kind of doing this across the board or for all of your clients and a lot of your copy, right? So if I'm always writing in the health and wellness space, the more I'm researching and reading for one product, that's going to inform copy that I write in the future. So it seems like a lot of work, but again, it's one of those things that just kind of builds on itself and eventually you become an expert. So. Keep that in mind also if you're just starting out, you will eventually become an ex expert in your topic. So the next thing is to consider as you're going through these things, but also really take the time to focus on what problems your product solves and get really specific, but also don't forget to get emotional. What emotional problems does your product solve? So sure, this product may help you deal with the keto flu. Let's say it's an electrolyte supplement that's gonna help people who are transitioning to burning ketones for fuel, and they go through what's sometimes called the keto flu, where they feel kind of sick, and electrolytes can help. So sure, you could just talk about, you know, this is gonna help you not feel so shitty, but you could really paint the picture and get more emotional and touch on the fear of wanting to start keto. Like maybe there's somebody who was afraid to start keto because they don't wanna go through keto flu. So really touch on the emotional elements 
of this product and how it's going to, you know, either solve some problems emo like emotionally, uh, prevent heartache, for example, um, prevent them from wasting time. You can touch on FOMO or the fear of missing out. Maybe you have more information on something than they do. Uh, people like to feel like they're informed. So that's something that you can definitely play on. So make sure you're always making notes. Also consider the dreams that this potentially fulfills, like switching to keto without feeling like shit, right? There's a dream that that's gonna potentially fulfill. So make sure you're not always just focusing on like the problems or the negatives, but also focus on the inspirational and the dreams that people have. And again, don't forget to get emotional. So I always, when I write down like the benefits of something that I'm writing about, I always try and take the time to write out what corresponding emotions are there. Are they frustrated? Are they sad? Are they embarrassed? Are they, you know, those are some of the more tr considered negative emotions. And then on the other side of that, it's how, you know, how could those potentially be turned into positives with your products? So that might be, they're feeling inspired, they're gaining momentum, they have more energy. Uh, so anytime you're writing, like always go back and see where you can add the emotional elements because remember we are emotional creatures and we do make our um, decisions largely based on emotions. So keep that in mind. Also, make sure you're constantly making a list of objections throughout this whole process. Just write objections somewhere in a Google Doc or actually physically write it and be adding to it as you go. Handling objections is one of my favorite techniques in all of my copy because it's a great opportunity to say, hey, I hear you, and you get to really connect with your audience when you call out their objections. Don't run from them, don't hide from them, call them out and say, like, I know you're probably skeptical because how could this little pill just completely eliminate the keto flu? Well, here's why. Or, I sure, does it sound too good to be true? I bet you it does. Here's why it's not. And here are the people just like you who were able to implement this thing or take this product to uh, find the results that you're seeking. So another great way of handling objections is to handle them straight up in the frequently asked questions. You can always have a frequently asked question uh, section in most types of copy, websites, email sequences, landing pages. You can always pretty much have a, an FAQ. And that is a great place to just straight up handle objections. So I love to do that. Um, and then the next thing you wanna do is to define your avatar. So after you've done all of this and not really before, make sure you take the time to really get specific about who you're talking to. And I mean really specific, like give them a name. Tell me how old they are. Tell me what they like to do. What do they do in their free time? What are their dreams in life? Where are they feeling stuck? What's their family like? What schools did they go to? Did they graduate from college? Did they even go to college? Do they like to travel? Like really, really get specific. And sometimes what I actually like to do is think of someone in my life who fits this avatar. And I'll just write out their actual name, write a few points about them, and then when I'm writing my copy, I imagine I'm writing directly to them. My sisters are often the people I write my copy to. So then after you've done all this research, outline the transformation that your customer is gonna go through using your product. Where do they begin before they even know your product exists? How do they feel? What are they thinking? What are they frustrated with? What, and then where are you gonna take them with your product? So again, make sure you're always incorporating emotions throughout. So create that outline of where are they starting? What's the middle look like, the journey part of it? And what does the end part of it look like for them? How are they feeling? What is it? What does the transformation look like? Have they lost a ton of weight without feeling like crap? Are they able to now navigate new food choices because they feel empowered? Are they feeling like they're gaining momentum because they're starting to lose a little weight and that's inspiring them to gain to do more and to really stick with their diet? So that's a great one, right? Because it's like you're telling them, I know it seems like a big thing to start right now, but you're gonna actually gain momentum once you start this process. You're gonna see some results and it's gonna encourage you to do more results. And that's gonna leave you feeling empowered and proud and less embarrassed and not feeling like you're a burden when you go to family, like 
gatherings or something because you know exactly how to eat. So like these are just all ideas around how you can really think about the transformation because that's what people want. They want a transformation. So this is how you um, kind of incorporate the hero's journey, which is often used and I love because it really puts your customer as the hero and your product or service as the guide, right? So we can say that the Frodo is the customer and Gandalf is your product or service you know, kind of guiding them through the process of becoming the ultimate hero of their own journey and their own transformation. So that's my favorite way to kind of outline my research process. Then, only then, do I make an actual outline. And sometimes at this point, I'll check my swipe file for inspiration because that will also sometimes give me some ideas on formatting. Like it's not even necessarily on ideas on how to actually like write the thing, but usually I look at my swipe file and I'll get inspiration for formatting or for even for layout or for um, kind of how I want to approach things or even just different ideas on how to connect with the audience. So always keep a swipe file, always check it, and always like skim it before you start, start a project because that will give you some ideas. But also I will say sometimes I don't wanna look at my swipe file, especially if I'm in my industry and I'm working on my in my industry a lot because I don't, I want it to sound different and fresh. So uh, depending on my mood, what I'm working on, the project of service, how I'm feeling, I actually sometimes won't check my swipe file. That is a good point. So that is how I kind of run through researching for a sales project. And I hope that that helps you. And if it does, go ahead and leave that thumbs up. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. What do you do to research? I love hearing your ideas and also definitely let me know of videos you wanna see in the future. This exact video was one of your ideas in one of my comments. So I really do listen and I really love hearing from you. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks guys.